Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease. I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute for medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Hello and welcome. I am so pumped for this episode. And the reason why is I recently watched Cree 2. Well, full disclosure, <laughs> I saw it twice. <laughs> the first time I saw it, I was in the right mind frame, but not really. But let me explain. I have had a very interesting year on so many levels. And if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that this has been a very trying year for me. The first time I saw the movie was on my birthday and it was very emotional for me. I really actually cry through most of the movie, not because it was super emotional per se, but I think that I really connected with my purpose that day. And it was really like an out-of-body experience. And when I recognized how there were so many parallels between what was happening in the movie and what was going on in my life, it was a lot. So after I saw the movie the first time, I came home and I actually created a vision board for myself. I wrote out all of my goals for 2019 And I cried a lot, a whole lot. (laughs) But the second time around was very different because I decided and I chose to adapt a new mindset moving forward because I realized that as I get older, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this too, You really have to level up on the way that you think and the way that you see the world, because if you don't, your body is going to suffer as a result of it. So that is why I decided to go watch the movie a second time. And that's when I took notes in the dark, which was fine because I wear glasses and I don't have good vision anyway. So I sometimes feel like I'm writing in the dark, which is all right with me. Anyway, I wanted to bring to you all my observation as a result of watching the movie because it really resonated with me, especially in terms of me being an athlete, but also just feeling like I'm in a constant battle when it comes to managing my disease, understanding what's best for my body, trying to figure out the push and pull when it comes to how much do I push myself or when do I really pull back? And that's really what I want to share with you guys today. I'm not going to give away the details of the movie because if you really want to watch it, highly recommend it, go see it. But there were a lot of themes that came up for me that I'm going to share with you all today. So, I know so many of you struggle with not wanting to get up, not wanting to face the day because of a lack of energy, motivation, drive, or whatever those things that you're currently experiencing that are really just pulling you down. And it's because your body is fighting so hard just to stay alive. How often Have you tried so hard to do everything in your power to feel better, whether it's going to the doctor, taking your medication, trying to eat the best diet, trying to exercise and trying to do all the things only to end up feeling like you're fighting a losing battle? Sometimes you're going to win that battle. You're going to be triumphant. You're going to come out of it on top and you're going to feel amazing which then you end up pushing yourself even harder than what you did before because you're trying to 
in a sense, make up for lost time. And I've talked about this on previous podcast episodes where I'm like, oh my goodness, my medication is adjusted and I feel amazing. Let me go do all the things. And your body very quickly snatches you back to reality and says, "Mm -mm, not quite sure what you thought you were doing there, but that's not going to work. And I've heard from so many of you whether you interact with me through email or social media or what have you, that you want to be able to just be quote unquote normal and be able to spend that time with your family and friends, but your body just can't do it. And it leads to just isolation and depression and frustration and confusion because you just don't get it. You don't understand why if you're doing all the things that you're supposed to, if you're taking your medicine, if you're trying to be a good person by, you know, meditating and exercising and journaling or whatever it is that you do to keep you focused, but yet you're still experiencing symptoms. Somehow that just does not feel fair. So not only do you Come to a point where you're so burned out from just trying to do all the things, the depression sits in, the anxiety kicks in, and all of a sudden, you feel more alone in the company of others than you ever have. And you think that you can get through things by yourself, but you really can't. We as humans weren't meant to be on this earth alone. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is even though I try so hard not to bother my friends or not to put too much on my family, ultimately I end up hurting myself. I end up getting more depressed because I'm not interacting with the people that I know love and want to be there for me. So you lose in that sense because you're just trying to be hard headed in some cases. And you're like, you know what? I got this. I don't need anyone. I'll be fine. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. And that's why I speak to you guys so much about, you know, if you feel lonely, if you're frustrated, reach out to me because it's too much to manage your condition by yourself. It just is. And it's so hard because when you have an autoimmune condition like I do or like you do, on the outside, you look fine. You look quote unquote normal. You look quote unquote healthy. But people don't realize the battle that's going on inside of you. And I know how frustrating that can be. When you try to go through life with your condition alone, you will always lose. Always. And that is something that I have learned managing my disease for over 10 years. The more I isolate myself, the worse off I feel. And it's just not worth it to me anymore. And as a result, I've learned how to adjust my strategy so that not only can I be effective, but I'm learning how to be a happy and healthier version of me each and every day. Do I fall short sometimes? Absolutely. Do I want to give up sometimes? Heck yeah. But at the end of the day, I have a vision and I have a purpose. Just like you do. You have a reason for being here. And I'm here to tell you that you are an amazing human being. And there's only one you and the world needs more of it. When you choose to take charge of your health, your strategy has to change. You have to fight differently. Your diet, your care, your routine, everything has to go. It's just like spring cleaning. All of the things that you used to do, especially when they don't work, you have to make a conscious decision to change your mindset and surround yourself with other people that are where you want to be. And you have to make a decision every day to move yourself forward, even if it's a little bit at a time. If it means that you go to bed 10 minutes earlier or you eat one particular vegetable that you never thought you eat, but you know that it's good for you, 
that's a step in the right direction. Because I'm going to tell you, you might think that you're alone, but you're not. Your opponent in many cases is going to be your body. You're competing with yourself, no one else at the end of the day. And the standards that are set forth by society in terms of what sick looks like, you have to ignore that. You have to move past that. And I know it's difficult because for me personally, I had symptoms in high school and kids were mean in high school and I can't even imagine what they're like now. Even adults, even people that we love and care for us will say things to us that will deeply hurt our feelings because they don't understand. And there is a reason why I don't really talk openly about my condition with my family because my brother is someone that doesn't understand and he makes comments that I think are inappropriate. So I choose not to share that aspect of myself with him. And I interact with other family members and can feel safe enough to talk about it with them because they choose to care. I want you to really think about what's important to you. Why are you fighting to feel better? Who are you fighting for? What purpose is pushing you towards being a healthy version of you? That's the question that I want you to answer to yourself. That's the question that I want you to answer because that is going to be your driving force or your why behind why you get up every day. In my case, I want to be able to create a lasting legacy for my family and my future family so that they can understand what healthy looks like so that I can learn how to identify the risk factors in my family I want to understand what those things are so that I can get it under control so that my children don't have to worry about that. And we know that there are a lot of things that are genetic, but there's also that whole nature versus nurture debate. That mindset and that motivation and pure willpower that you have deep down inside of you, it's what is going to propel you forward and take you to the next level. Many of you are parents, your caretakers, your business owners, all of you are working towards a bigger and better goal. And I want you to know that you can do it. When it feels like you have nothing left, take one more step. When it feels like all you want to do is just give up, crawl in the corner and cry. Do that, but set a timer. (laughs) don't allow yourself to go down that rabbit hole of feeling sorry for yourself because it's only going to hurt you in the long run. I know for a fact because it's happened to me. And when I felt like my doctor wasn't helping me, Google wasn't helping me, other people weren't helping me, I just wanted to quit. But what I had to recognize was that, again, I have a vision and a purpose for my life. And it was my responsibility and only my responsibility to come out of my depression and really go full speed ahead into living my life on purpose. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. It's so easy for us to feel sorry for ourselves, but you can't allow yourself to do that. You can't allow yourself to stay in the past and focus on all the things that didn't work and all the things that went wrong. And, oh, why isn't my medication working? Or why am I still feeling symptoms? Acknowledge it for what it is in that moment, especially when you don't feel well, but recognize that you have so much more ahead of you to look forward to. And I want to encourage you to do those things. Focus on the good. Focus on the fact that you are a warrior. Focus on the fact that you will win. Focus on the fact that you are extraordinary. Sometimes people may say, oh, you don't look sick. You look fine to me. I don't understand what's wrong with you. Smile at those people because that tells you that at the end of the day, When society makes us feel like we have to be on 100% of the time, I really want to make sure that you understand that that is simply not true. Stop believing in the lies that you have to hustle hard 
24 7 365 no days off that is not a sustainable model and you will not get better by focusing on what's going on in the world today in terms of hustle harder and trying to get ahead. What I want you to do is I want you to take a minute today and I want you to write down all of the things that you're grateful for and all of the things that you have been able to accomplish. I want you to take some time to write down how you feel, and how much better you are today than what you were yesterday. All of us have challenges. All of us are going through things that are difficult. All of us might not feel that great, but at the end of the day, you were better than what you were yesterday. But don't get so caught up in trying to prepare for tomorrow and next year when you haven't even gotten through today yet. As I said before, I want you to focus on the good. I want you to focus on your mindset and recognizing and remembering that you can do anything that you put your mind to. What I want you to do is I want you to focus on the good. Focus on what is going right. Focus on the fact that you do have a support system. Focus on the fact that maybe today your joints don't hurt as bad as they did yesterday. Focus on the fact that you can walk up a flight of stairs without your heart feeling like it's going to fall out of your chest. There are days now where I feel so much better than what I did before. But when those days come where my joints hurt and I feel like I can't move, I have to keep my mind on the prize and I have to continue to focus on gratitude because the days when I don't feel well are few and far between now. And that makes me so happy. Many of you have reached out to me via email and you're talking to me about all of the things that you're going through and what your symptoms are. And again, I want to encourage you and let you know that you're not alone and we're in this together. So with that, friends, we are going to do this. You are going to overcome those obstacles. You are going to get better. You are going to feel well. And I just want to encourage you a little bit every week. So with that, friends, I hope you have an amazing day. And remember, you are a warrior. Okay, thyroid warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, be great, reflect on your triumphs, and as always, be well. Take care.